my sister and I, we have this little joke that when we grow older, us siblings, my brother and two sisters, we're going to live together like the Golden Girls. And for those of you who don't know what the Golden Girls is, it was a 80s sitcom about four friends who unexpectedly live together in their later years. I love my family and I couldn't think of a better way to spend out the later parts of my, year, my years. Growing up, my dad, sitting at the head of the table, would look at us kids square in the eye and he would say to us, so, which one of you are going to look after us when we're older? I was six. <laughs> it's a little bit of an odd question to ask a six-year-old, don't you think? I mean, in my mind, they were so young, so active, energetic, sharp. They were looking after me. The idea of me looking after them seemed frightening and impossible. My parents immigrated to Australia and they worked tremendously hard to ensure that we had an abundance of opportunity and choice. And we absolutely did. Could it be that they were scared of getting older, feeling lonely, disconnected and forgotten about? They were part of a generation though that paved the way for prosperity for themselves and ourselves. The way in which we live as families today is very different. The big traditional home is often empty because we don't all live in the same cities, but yet those left in the family home can feel lonely and disconnected. We live in a busy world. We're so wrapped up in our own busyness. Fleeting connections are often misunderstood as deep connections. But if we truly want to live in a more connected world, we need to nurture our community and those close to us, not just by clicking the like button. Loneliness is a significant contributor to depression, but connection can be a lifesaver. And that connection that is formed from this living like a golden girl arrangement can't be understated. The living like a golden girl living arrangement goes a little bit like this. Friends, or in my case, family, get together and they purchase a home. They share the household expenses and the responsibilities. But more importantly, they look out for one another. They build a community. Individuals create the family. The family create the community. And the community creates a more connected world. And these behaviours are a learned behaviour from childhood. Growing up, we'd sit at the dinner table every night for dinner. Imagine it, the 1980s. Rectangle table, there were six of us. Laminax, tabletop, vinyl seats. Dad at the head of the table. Mum to his left. And we each had our designated spot. I was at the end of the table opposite Dad because I'm the youngest, so I'm the lowest in the pecking order. Every night, we'd sit at the table. We would talk, we would tease each other, and in many cases, on a Saturday night, after Mum had spent the whole day loving, lovingly making the most amazing pizza dough, because that's how long good pizza dough takes, my brother would torment me and constantly steal my pizza crust. It is the most favourite part of the pizza for me. But without doubt, we were at that table, and we would listen to Mum and Dad talk and, and often fight, because, yep, we're passionate Italians, and but let's be realistic, life isn't always sunshine and lollipops. 
Every night, though, we sat at that table and we connected. Today, my family, my husband and two kids, we sit at the dinner table, except this time the table is round, so there's no hierarchy. I love to watch my kids and the incidental ritual that they've created setting the dinner table. The tablecloth, the trivet to put the meal that we're about to share in the middle of the table, and the very best plates. Because as Nigella Lawson says, you must eat on the very best plates that you have every meal, because life is too short. Friends and family often comment how much they love to have the children at their dinner table. Their table manners, their conversation, and the appreciation for the meal that's been cooked for them, even if they don't particularly like it. Today, and growing up, it's my happiest part of my day. Eating together and sharing a meal and the benefits that that has are profound. It's a unifying connection point. Sharing a meal with your loved ones, friends or a stranger can have a true impact. In fact, studies from the OECD show that it, it leads to combating loneliness amongst other social and well-being benefits. It also shows in the OECD studies that it has a a significant um, contribution to the way children's interact, children interact with their parents and their peers, as well as academic performance. But the benefits of eating at the dinner table go beyond the dinner table. For me, and my behaviours, and what I learned growing up, I truly believe that if you give freely without expectation of return, a bigger door of opportunity will open. I like to call this emotional philanthropy. Thinking back, my parents were so generous emotionally and financially, not just to us, but to others. I remember a time when I was six. A friend of theirs came to the house and he was crying, he was really upset. They sat underneath the jacaranda tree and I was watching them from outside, from inside in the kitchen, peering out the kitchen window on my tippy toes. His daughter was incredibly sick and he couldn't afford the medical treatment. My mum and dad wrote him a cheque. We didn't have a bottomless pit of money to just give away. Thirty years later, this man drove for hours to come to my dad's funeral and pay his deep respects. Afterwards, he said to me that mum and dad's help not only helped save his daughter's life, but their emotional support saved him from himself. It left me speechless. Then there was this other time when I think I was about nine. Mum and dad gave refuge to a young Italian woman, she was pregnant. Her marriage had fallen apart. She had no family here. Yet their emotional support created such a drama within the Italian community because it's not the done thing. But they didn't care. They knew that it was the right thing to do. Today, this woman has a new life and she had this baby and her baby now is in her 30s and about to have a baby of her own. And the love and respect that this woman has for my parents is like she has for her own. And in fact, her kids call us their cousins. When you stop and pull yourself out of your busyness, your own stuff, and you turn your attention to someone else, someone you know, or someone you've met, a stranger. The effect that that connection has is profound. For yourself, 
for the other person and every person that they pay it forward to. Emotional philanthropy. It's about giving self freely, energy and smarts. It's about care and compassion. That impact cannot be quantified. It's the one precious gift that artificial intelligence, automation and personalised marketing will never replace. It is what cultivates humanity. It is what brings us hope and joy, regardless of age. It's the power of human connection. Thank you.